Michelle Guarizé, watching City Edge TV. Don't change the dial. Tana Delano, Hollywood actor and producer. Keep it locked on City Edge TV. Hi everybody. My name is uh, Chef Bashir Abusalakimo. I'm the CEO of Ali T. Green and the Planet Limited. And I'm the author of My Beautiful People. Um, it's all awesome thing to witness something like this. And uh, we'd like to ask you, Putting up this book, what brought the concept? How do you how do you get the inspiration when you when you, when you when you wrote this book? I mean, what gives you that you know, inspiration to come up with something like this? Um, I've always been a storyteller, not um, in the movie sense. I've always loved writing. I like writing stories about torture and over while I was young. And growing up, when I became a chef, I had the double ones. I had the degree in education. So, once a teacher, I always a teacher. I just wanted to share my knowledge. And that was what was my there's so much in my head that I need to share. This is just the beginning. So I hope that answers your question. Um, from being a chef to becoming an author, so how have you been transitioning between the two phases of life? In every business, in every business, there's always a downtime. And that downtime, instead of me being depressed and not having anything to do, I start writing. And um, like you, you would have heard earlier on in the program, my sister said I'm very energetic and energetic and active. As energetic as I am, I'm also I'm not an introvert. I'm not an extrovert. So I like to be in my head, in my space, and that period. I start writing because there's so much running. When you when you're someone that you're always in your head, at that point you start writing and you start bringing something out. Sometimes I'm thinking faster than I'm writing, so I just drop a voice record to jot down my ideas. It just pops in. I think he's just in the That's what I feel. Okay. So first of all, yeah, I think um, you're doing a good job, and um, I understand the challenges. Yeah. So I understand the challenges, but then again, I also want to know what are the challenges you encounter while writing this book. Did you get? Did you also get any support from family and friends, or it was just a personal thing? Um. The real definition of independent woman, that's me. I really ask for help because I'm always scared of people telling me no. And the reason why I do not ask people for help and I do things on my own. Um, writing a cookbook is very, very different from writing any other book. It's capital intensive. To write a cookbook, you need to have a test kitchen. kitchen. That's the reason why the second book is not out yet. Because this one has been since has been written since five years. We were only able to find two needs in 2021. It was published in 2023 on Amazon. 2022. It has been written since 2018. So it was fine-tuned before Amazon and Amazon published it first in 2023. Writing a cookbook is not like writing any other book. Writing any other book, you just put down what is in your head and you publish, you edit, get people to edit for you, and that's all. For writing a cookbook, you need a test kitchen. You need to show every step of the recipe. You need to take pictures of every step of the recipe. And you know, you people are photographers, you know how much you charge us. 
So it's not, it's not, it's not banks. It's very, very expensive. Okay. Um, you know, in the culinary world, a lot of people will say, oh, it's not something you venture into. You just wake up one morning and be like, yes, I'm going to start cooking. Or I want to venture into cooking business, right? And we have so many people out there that would love to do this kind of a business, right? And we understand that you can't do this business without having, you know, some sort of capital, right? So to, for you as a person, how does this stand? I mean, how do you get the capital to sort of stand? Okay. I'll talk to you now. I was spent it as a teacher. <laughs> Firstly, if you want to do any business, culinary or not, you have to have passion for it. One of the most tedious business to do is feeding people. You have to plan the menu, go to the market, Mr. Mille, we call it Mr. Mille, that's quick here before cooking. Then you cook and you serve. And when you are serving, people still do me on you that the teacher will not give us your love rice. What does that mean that you people are always saying on social media? It's not easy going into the culinary business, but you have to have passion for it. So you need to first and foremost build a passion. One. Two, everything is easy now. You can rent anywhere. If you have a passion, go to a culinary school. Make sure you learn. There's lots of Atawada chefs now. I can cook the food you can cook. The fact that you cook at home and people said it's sweet doesn't mean people will eat it outside and it will be sweet. There is costume. You need to learn costing unless you will enter this. As a chef, I know how many people that are going to use a bag of rice for. I know how many people, if I want to cook fried rice, how many people a bag of rice is going to produce? How many people a bag of rice will produce for your love rice? How many people a bag of rice will produce for white rice? That's we call it costing. You need to Running a catering or culinary business does not mean that you go to the kitchen and cook. It's basic. It doesn't happen that way. And you also have to consider the health of the people you're serving. I always tell my, uh, my clients and my students that now, if I'm, if I'm catering for a party for elderly people, I have a type of rice I would use. If I'm catering for a party for youngsters, I have another type of rice I would use because I'm considering their health. And when I'm planning their menu, I will plan their menu according to their age. But in Nigeria, we do a lot of bad things. We don't consider our health. People, people, clients need to always ask their caterer. It will be expensive, but you need to ask that, oh, I'm above 40. I can't be eating cholesterol because I need to watch my health. What are you using for my party? What type of oil are you using? Things are expensive, but if you want a good food. Soup waste sweets. The money killer. So that is that about journey on that. Take it from what you just said. Um, about our country, Nigeria, and with the way people, you know, eat out, you know, outside. I'm considering all the ingredients you, you know, use while you know cooking, and you know, sometimes you just walk up to a shop and you see someone sweating, and the person is cooking, and you're still, you know, you're snatching the hand and all the sweat, you know, dropping into, into the food. You're talking of mama food. Yeah, 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 exactly. The mama food kind of see, thing. Now the question is this, the question is this, in looking at the future of this country, do you think we, 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 uh, we can have, we can afford to have, you know, people that are professional, you know, coming into that business and sanitize your environment? Let me tell you something. I have, I've had instances where I told someone, oh, why don't you go and eat Amalaga? They said, no, 
those ones where those women they sweat on top now you are like different people different strokes different but let me tell you something everything is evolving the culinary industry is evolving people that have gone to school to learn are now more in business than people who are in the business because they have money and they know that selling food sells. So everything is evolving. So on that note, we are hoping for involvement. Okay, um, uh, could you please take us on the journey of um, how and where you got your training and certifications from to become uh, a professional chef? My training started wrong. My mom, one of my mom, I have two mothers, and one of my mom is a food and nutrition teacher. And my mom, my other mom is an Islamic studies teacher, but you know in the olden days, unlike now, the curriculum has changed now. In the olden days, the curriculum every child must learn food and nutrition or management solely. While I was in secondary school, that it wasn't for us because I did exams that I had to so skirt and blouse. But it's no more like that now. I don't know what the um, curriculum has done this. Which the <laughs> which the government has the government needs to really really aid. I I started, um, I also went to summer schools. I went to summer schools. Then I started training. Anytime anybody's going abroad, I asked them to buy cookery books from chefs I really, really look up to. Then I started training. Then I started getting certifications. I started training myself and getting certifications. Like I told you, every develop, self-development I've done is when I'm idle. I hate being idle. So instead of sitting down and doing nothing, I develop myself. Okay. Uh, how has uh, social media enhanced your brand as a chef? Uh, I'm not a content person. I'm not. I'm just trying. I'm not... There are people that are really, really doing well in content creating in the culinary industry. There are people that are posting rubbish too, but there are people that are really, really doing well. They are really, really doing well. And I can't say I'm near them. I'm once in a while, like, I've not posted on my YouTube page in six months. I only post when I'm cooking for, for the house or I'm cooking for business. And sometimes when I'm busy, I don't get time to post. So I can't say I'm a social media chef. I'm not, I'm, when I'm busy, I'm not, I'm not a boss, I'm a leader. I work and I start falling because I know the job. I'm not the type of, um, I'm not in the business by association. My chefs learn from me. So I work, we work together. I'm not saying, because those people, I feel that people who get time to take pictures, they are not, they are not, the aunts are not, that's why they have time. Because when I'm busy, I do not have time to take my phone. Uh, sorry, uh, with what you just said, uh, are you not thinking it is important now than ever? Uh, putting your content out there, I mean creating content around what you do because people want to see professionals coming into that, you know, that space and uh, I think, I think it would be good if you could, uh, I mean, do more of that and uh, should we be expecting more of that from you? Um, we can all not be content creators, let's be factual We cannot all, uh, we can all not be the same, even twins are not the same. So everybody will create a niche for themselves. My own niche is putting my knowledge down and teaching people through book. So, like I said while I was giving my speech, the second book is from The third is almost ready. The fourth is on its way. 
and the fit is also as also standard. You know, for someone to be putting out different ideas for different topics, you know that my head is overworking. And with that, I can't put all that on social, on social media. It's too, it will be too tedious. So I feel my own way of teaching people is through writing, not through content creation. Okay. 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 Uh, like my colleague said, I'm reiterating the, uh, on the positive side of it that for brand visibility yes. and in an attempt to reach a wider audience, audience and the global balance, the essence of social media cannot be underruled. So you you may still want to uh, consider it after this session, how to use social media to enhance the brand. However, on quality assurance, I would like to ask you, how do you think the government can come on board to um, restate quality in the chef uh, culinary industry? People should not come in a few or something. I'm of the school of thought that the government cannot do everything but what are we as citizens contributing to the country? Quality assurance should be done by individual. Let your conscience judge you. I cannot sell what I cannot sell. I cannot sell, but I cannot eat because before I eat it, I'm going to taste it to make sure that it is perfect enough for you to eat, to consume. So, and I feel that is what every chef and caterers, event caterers, should be doing. The government cannot be everywhere, so we can't expect the government to do everything for us. We, as a citizen, we should have our own responsibility as the citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Is there another question? Imagine, yeah. Okay. Or you can still code me. Okay. So the question is, Emma, it is of one thing where a fair amount of my code. Very a lot of what you do. She, any lock on code, no joke on. Okay, Sherry, you wait more for it and launch new day. You wait yes. I'm I'm a person big they say. Can't school man and you know. See ever she way you know, and my little activities for the best one. Activities for the best. We can never come on more drop, can never come on more color. Oh, I mean, we know. So, if we mean, we have fun, we have fun. And see, if we keep our mom, we be keep more of our mom. That to keep, that to come on more like fun. Then that to keep our mom busy. She ain't got the um so yeah. And what's the second question? Okay, so let's see. Um, in two weeks time. In two weeks, on the emergency in two weeks' time, you should be able to buy the book on my bio. There's a link tree on my bio on Instagram, that is CEO bio. If you're outside Nigeria, and you're back in Nigeria, only Rani or Amazon, me Amazon, more cocoa publisher. So in your never add copy any Amazon. But I'm not I'm not trying to boast here of what in Nigeria find it's Amazon by far. So if you wanna buy in Nigeria, the link is on my link tree in my bio, Ladit CEO. When you click on it you see Flutter Wheel, then you can purchase the book starting from soon next time. And the um, the cost after today, for, uh, from two weeks time, the cost is just six thousand naira. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so um, natural. Uh, um, you said the title of the book is my the little cookery. My little my little cookery. cookery book. Is it limited to just children, or can wives also benefit from the recipes? Yes, it's um from the preface and introduction of the book. It's for everybody that is new 
in the kitchen. It has pictures of equipment and each, um, utensils that you need, you need to know and know how to use in the kitchen. And little things, little things that you could put together. But I'm assuring you, when you buy the book, you'll be able to make a perfect chocolate chip cookie. Uh, naturally and culturally, food cooking started for me. Yes. So, what advice are you going to give to the where well, parents or child that is sent to boarding school or everything? If I went to boarding school through my life, okay. I went to boarding school. My dad believed in me. He believed in me. He believed in me. I was being born now. So I went to boarding school, nursery and primary school. I went to um, what's this in Medina Estate. What is it? Toy parts in Medina Estate in Bagada was boarding house. I went to Federal Women Girls College. I had to, oh, I had to devise a trick for me not to go back to boarding house in SS1. I said I was funny sick because I wanted to be at home. And all those schools that I was enrolled in, my parents, when we were in school, was a long time ago, the curriculum was better. There was food and nutrition. There was food and nutrition in school. There was home management in school. I don't see that anymore. And we need to bring it back. There are a lot of things missing in our educational curriculum. And that's why people like us are thinking to go back to education. Because, like someone said, what he was given speech and also my we lost it completely. And we need to go back to the beginning, to the root. A lot of people do not have conscience anymore because there's no, they have not been training for conscience. The training starts from home. The school has a lot to do, but the most training starts from home. Most of the thing and the interest was built at home, not at home. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, to end this session, um, we we have um, the presence of star actors in the building. Is it safe for us to call you a celebrity chef? Um, I would ask them. They're the one that can name me a certified celebrity chef, baby. <laughs> All right. So I'm coming for the one or two last questions. Okay. One coming from the little Lola. Another one from the Ramsar. Okay, I'm thinking my hair right now. Okay, so, okay, wait. Um, as a chef, have you ever had any Sorry, I'm sorry, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me correct you there. It's pronounced chef. Not chef. Not chef. Okay, sorry. It's a French <laughs> word. Sorry. Most of the things in culinary industries are from France. Well noted. That's the center, that's the capital. You well just said the record to it, fantastic. Well noted. There's, she was going to ask question about have you ever had a clash or any with event planners? Because we have an event planner here. Are you careful? I'm sure you are. She's also present here. All the event planners that I've worked with are now like a roast to me or a boss to me so because know. I always make their work easy. Once you give me a job, we are in need together. I will just call you. How can we stay today? Fantastic. Well done. Well, Mika, we have your question, please. Thank you, Chef Bashiragiwa. Alright, uh, Chef, session. I, I read that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would love to ask, what do you have to say to some of our chefs on Instagram that has really defined recipes? I saw a video of uh, Indomie Swalu. <laughs> they had to blend it for us and make, make it Swalu. Will you call that as though it is creative or they are doing it for content as a chef? Okay. As a chef, I'm going to address it in two ways. A chef is a person that creates a food and creates a menu. That means that for someone to be a chef, you need to give them ingredients they do not know and they have to come up with a meal with it. That's how I test any person that comes to my kitchen to be a chef. And most of them fail woefully. They only go back, they only produce things that someone has produced before. 
So as we say people that are making Indomie um, Swali are being innovative and can be called chef. But elsewise, we there's already been announcements that so much of noodles, Indomie especially, is bad because it has high sodium content. So increasing I increase using something that you're supposed to reduce to swallow does not reduce the sodium content to me it's rubbish it's rubbish and nobody should eat it it's not to swallow it's, uh, okay not me. um no so not no to speak the reason why I'm not using noodles because there are different kinds of noodles there's rice noodles and there's noodles that are made from flour those ones are the ones they are selling and our children are eating. And those ones have ice sodium. If you want to give your children noodles, rather give them rice noodles. Then, and don't put soy sauce in game. Because a lot of people, what I see on social media now, I see everybody just using soy sauce. Soy sauce. Everybody is putting soy sauce in everything. Maggi has sodium. You're putting, I mean, okay, Tasty Cube, sorry, I'm, I'm not mentioning brand. Tasty Cube has sodium. You are adding a soy sauce. Soy sauce means sodium reduction sauce. And you are adding meat to eat again. You're saying you're making it tasty. It's not making it tasty. You're just, we're just killing ourselves. A little by little. That's what I would say to that. Thank you so Thank you much, everyone. Thank you. Yes. We have one more question. No problem. From Honorable Otumba. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, I Chef. I salute your competency. Uh, you are very attention of uh, giving right men to the right uh, um, consumer. Yes. Because we are what, what we eat. What we eat is important. Yes. So in view of this, I want to bring call you back to our culture as Africa. You mentioned you training your whole child about how to cook. I want to correct that notion. I bet we disagree with you on that. That as a man is just your right. It's not a right. It's just an obligation to help your wife. Probably when she's tired. Yes, to help. Sorry, yes. uh, I'm an African man. So, oh, sorry, yeah, I'm I'm sorry I'm sorry, I'm I know that you're an African man and yes. you're trying to support um, the masculinity. Uh, I'll call it that you're trying to support the masculinity. Exactly. Let me I'm tell you sorry. something. Do you know who inspired me to write this book? It's my nephew. Whenever I'm in the kitchen, Auntie, can I help? What's this? And I now notice that all the children that come in big morning, be it boy, be it girl, they are always interested in joining me in the kitchen. Big mommy, what is this? Can I help? Big mommy, teach me so that I can make it. So cooking is not gender based. Please let's correct that. If you are a, if you are a family with only male child. Are you saying that nobody will be able to help the mother? Yes. Yes. And let me tell you something. If a male child was able to help the mother and growing up he went to the university, he would be able to take care of himself. And let me tell you another another point as the Gen Z. The Gen Z generation. Those ones. The females, they believe that they don't have to serve any man. If you train your male child very well, nobody will use your son to do shakara. And I think men in this part of the world, they need to unlearn something. We need to learn a lot of things. You let your born child go into the kitchen. You don't have to be a super. I'm telling you, you need to unlearn. Reza, Reza. I have a He was my younger brother. I was sick. He was taking me to the hospital and he had to go for me. As he took care of me for two weeks, making healthy meals for me. If my mom or we did not allow him in the kitchen, I would have starved to death. And it was only me and him at home. Yes. 
cooking, culinary, is not gender based. For be free, is a man. God or Ramsey is a man. They are multimillionaires in dollars. In the culinary, they are multimillionaire chefs. There is guy. They are multimillionaire chefs. These people are making bastard money. Culinary is not gender based. And a chef is not an house for your house guest. Fantastic. Yes. Let me tell you. And a round of applause for Chef Bashira Kiwa. Okay, you can do Friends come take pictures of that. But before we wrap up this section, we want to wrap a question from Dayo Amusa. She says she doesn't have a question per se. I think she wants to commend you. I do. Thank you. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I want to say um, I'm proud of you. Thank you, baby. First and foremost, I want to say that I'm proud of you for coming up with this initiative. Thank you, baby. Well. Um, like I said, I'm not going to be asking any question, but I'm just going to give you two things. Most especially about the presence of your brand. I can understand the fact that you're not really a social media person, but um, we would, I want to believe that we would not agree that the social media space is the deal now. And um, as a writer, you chose to um, reach out to people via that process. And then I believe that there is no way you can rule out being on social media for you to make a positive impact based on what you believe in. So, like I said, I'm not going to be asking questions about the tripping in one or two things, which majorly I would advise you to find all possible ways to be present, I mean fully present on social media. Because there are some people that, um, they might not have that knowledge of how to get the book that you're trying to you know, put out there for people to see, to read, and then get to learn one or two things about it. But the fact that everybody is on social media, everybody, like everybody is on social media, you're not on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you're not on Twitter, you're on Instagram, TikTok, you know, what are they? So we need you on social media. We need your presence on social media. We need to see and know what your brand is all about and what it stands for on social media so that at least you know, that would help to expand. Noted, noted, that thank you. reach out to a lot of people and by so doing, you are impacting and also, you know, informing a whole lot of people out there about what you stand for, what your book stands for. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Um, well noted, and I'm going to work on it. Thank you so much, guys. So, let's take questions. Okay, so go ahead and say questions. Okay, I'm um, Bill Keys, and I just want to appreciate you you always inspire me to do better. I'm also into catering stores, and I'm happy and grateful for your advice, the help. Everything just keep going, sis. Sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy. Okay, the final word okay. is if, um, if you want to get the book, the book from Tourist will start being on sales on Portal Wave, and the link is on my bio, Ladit CEO, Ladit underscore CEO, so you can buy the book from Tourist time. Thank you. And the price of the book is 6,000 Naira from two weeks time. That's very cheap. It's also on Amazon for people outside Nigeria. It's, um, if you're not, if you're in Africa, if you're in Nigeria and Africa, you can buy on Portaway. But if you're in the United States, United Kingdom, people have been buying from United States, United Kingdom, or anywhere in Europe or on Amazon. The link is also in my bio. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. A round of applause for everyone, please. Thank you. Most especially. Yes, um, can we have the celebrity uh, friends and family?